we've got a it's a l39 kubota loader backhoe um tractor the backhoe's off of it right now but these things got a nice big heavy duty backhoe on them um but he had it off he's got a a three-point skidding winch and he'd been using it with this tractor but we're going to service it it's my belongs to my principal and um he asked me if uh if I'd bring it up here and, and service it for them and go through it good. Uh, they bought it used. I'm not sure how many hours it had on it at that time, but uh, we're gonna go through it, change all the fluids, filters, grease everything good. Gotta do some work on the front end loader, which will probably be a separate video. Um, so yeah, that's what, that's what the plan is. But these are a nice little, a nice little machine. Um, got your gauges and stuff over here to the side that way you can see them no matter uh if you're turned around backwards for the backhoe or or forwards to drive it um i like this gear selection on it it's just got 12 speeds forward eight reverse looks like and when i was bringing it down here from the shop after i done loaded it on the trailer you can bump through these gears, just push the shifter, and it'll automatically shift. You don't have to use the clutch or nothing. Uh, I guess they call it a glide shift transmission. I'm not sure, but uh, I was really impressed with that. That that is a nice, nice feature. Um, Cause you just it just very little increments of change, and uh, not having to clutch it and stuff. I can see like when you're carrying dirt with your front end loader. You go in and gear down and get a scoop, and then you go to tram to dump it. You can shift up real easy and change your speeds and stuff. Ten times I'd rather have that over a, a hydrostat, which I'm not a fan of a hydrostat transmission. Not at all. They're just too weak, I feel like. Like on that BX, it just seems like it, uh, it just don't have the oomph you need, the grunt. Um, but... We'll see what we get into here. Go ahead and jerk these side panels off. Get them over here out of the way. You know something I like about these Kubotas is I'm pretty positive. I haven't checked and double checked my numbers, but the filters I ordered for this tractor, the hydraulic filters, and um, I think I don't know how y'all are looking, but um, the hydraulic filters and the oil filter, I'm pretty sure it's the same filters as it uses on this uh, M6060. Uh, fuel filters are different. Fuel filter is different and probably the air filter is different uh, i hope that's the right air filter the box looks long but the filter might not be that long we'll have to check that out here in a little bit but uh i ordered it for an l39 we'll find out i'm gonna go ahead and change this air filter kind of waiting on things to warm up a little bit down here i just built a fire I believe she needed changed this inner element probably needs change too. I've got an inner from that M6060. I didn't order one for this tractor. I'm gonna look and see. I think mine might be longer. I'm gonna check them here and see if uh, see if they work, and I'll put it in. No, my inner element's a lot bigger. My inner elements don't like much being the size of that. One. Uh, he'll probably be okay, but it definitely needs to change the next round. These Kubota air filters, the way they got that rubber on the ends of them, they, they have a real good seal when you push them in. I like that. 
Okay, dokie. Got that. Took care of. Probably need to add a little bit of coolant in it here in a few minutes. Yeah, it's low. My tractor had a coolant leak yesterday. One of the hoses was leaking. I had to tighten the clamp up and it seems like it's been okay overnight. Pan belt's real loose. I don't know, I don't see how it was charging, hardly. As loose as that is. I'm loosen this bolt, see if it'll swing out. If it won't, I'll probably have to loosen the bottom bolt too. Let's see, that's not it. And it's a different size. Of course, it would be. Oh man, that was tight. Tight, tight, tight. Now, pull some tension on it. About all the slack adjuster we got left. Good shape, good shape. I already cracked this loose here. That's your fuel filter. Let's look at it. Oh, got fuel everywhere. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty. Sawdust shavings, a little fine shavings of sawdust or something in that. You don't know. The bowl, you can tell it's dirty down in there too. So uh, I'm going to take it outside and clean it real good and then I'll bring it back and we'll put it together. Okay, we got it all cleaned up. New filter in place. I think I'm gonna start that filter up on there just to make sure I'm getting it right. Then I'll put that. Then I'll put the lock ring. Let's see if it'll fire up. Right here is where the drain plug is on these and you got to remember there's one on both sides because you got a split oil pan where the drive shaft runs through there so you have to drain it from both sides you got our oil all drained the plugs put back in so now we will jerk our filter off Got the oil pan slid over under it. Sealing surface off. Make sure it's clean. All right, we'll reinstall our new filter. 
The one that came off, I believe, was a Napa filter. I tell you, I like these Kubota filters. Um, if you ever get a chance, Messick's did a review on hydraulic or on filters, oil filters or whatever, hydraulic. And uh, Kubota was better than any of them. They're worth the money. Worth the money. And you can tell by just feeling of them. I mean, they're just a heavy, heavy built filter. Got more filter paper in it and everything. Check them out sometime on that video. In the book, it says the engine oil capacity is uh, six quarts with a filter. So we'll get it filled up here and then fire it up and check for leaks. Okay, we'll crank it up, check for leaks, and let it drain back down and check the oil. Hello, cat. See what it says. Okay, I've been draining the hydraulic oil, and uh, right there's one of your drain plugs. There's one on up there towards the front, and then you've got one right here in each side that's got to be drained. Well, I missed it. Bet you got one there and you got one over here on this other side. I assume that's your brake. Possibly your brake housing or it either may just be the final drive. I don't know how these are set up exactly. But we'll get both sides of that drained out. All right, now we're gonna jerk these bolts out right here. Take this shield down that protects the uh, hydraulic filters before we can get to them. This in here, the head's messed up on it. Have to get a wrench and take it out, I guess. That bolt must have hit a rock or something at one time. Clean that out good. Full of mud. And I'll set it out here. We'll clean it up before we put it back. And your hydraulic filters are right up in there. This filter took a pretty good lick at some point. Right there is something you always want to be careful for when you're buying used equipment. Is uh, look for painted filters. These are the original Regional hydraulic filters, never been off of it. It's 1,600 hours. So they was definitely ready to be changed, without a doubt. Yeah, that's 
see if I can get the other one off. All right, let's examine this filter here. Never been changed, look at the sludge, metal sludge built up on that uh, magnet right there. Very important to change these at the initial 50 hour service and get the majority of that metal shavings out of there from the factory. Look bit a lot of, lot of metal sludge on that. Here's the other one. See some pretty good size chunks. I really like these filters. It's got the uh, magnets. Cause that helps to catch that stuff. But it's in bad need of some hydraulic filters. Got our new filters out. Probably should have had a glove on, but I didn't. Oh, put a little oil on the the rubber seal. Then I'm popping these things back on until I get over and ready to put them on, just to keep stuff out. All right, little update. I've got. The hydraulic filter's back on. I filled it up with oil. It took uh, most right at 12 gallon with the uh, hydraulic filters once they filled up. And put my guard cover back on the, the guard for the filters. I always make sure when you're changing um, hydraulic oil and filters that you crank the tractor and let just let it sit there and idle for a while to get everything filled up, all your filters filled up and everything purged to good before you go to try to move it or raise your loader or do anything like that. Now, uh, I checked on this front axle. It's low. I don't know how low. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and jerk these front wheels off uh, to where I can drain it from each side get drained out and just put fresh oil back in it for him. It's got a little bit of a leak on this side. Uh, don't know, I might see what I can tell about that once I get the wheel off. But we'll get started at that. Wheels damaged pretty bad on this one. Lug nuts was on backwards. The taper was facing out instead of the taper facing in. And it's let that thing waller and waller them holes out pretty bad. I'd say that will be hard to, for them to keep tight now. Yeah. We'll see. You can see how that one is. And then that taper fits right down in there. We'll put it on the way they're supposed to be and just see how it does. Right here's your front axle. Drain plug. Got one on each side you have to drain. Oil's thick there where it's not been run and it's cold today.
But we'll let her drain a while and do the other side too. All right, we got our front axle filled back up. Right here's the check plug. You just take that out, fill it from this port till it starts running out right there. But now if you're using thick gear oil, you need to, once it starts running out there, put your plug in it, let it set a while, come back and check it again. And then you'll probably have to add some more. That'll give it time to run down in these cases on each end. Can't tell if you got a spot on you or if it's on the back spot. Yeah, that's better. Um, we have changed the front gear oil, changed the hydraulic oil, hydraulic filters, changed the fuel filter, changed the oil, oil filter, and air filter, greased it. And now, on to our next project, which will be a different video. This skid steer plate's twisted. That and over there, this one here is right. See how it's coming back and touching? Look at that one, the gap in it. I think this rod in here has twisted somehow. So, that'll be our next video, I'm trying to get that fixed. If y'all will, please like, subscribe, comment, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.